My enthusiasm for joining the CFPB, and indeed for the notion, the main tenets of financial reform in general, were kind of grounded in what to me uh, were a, a couple of observations about how things went so haywire during the course of the bubble and then, and then ultimately the crisis. Uh, and for me, the main, like the central problem in US consumer finance was that for a period of several years during the bubble, it was very difficult to get paid to make good decisions. Now, making good decisions on credit risk, on rate risk, on counterparty risk of all kinds, it's hard. And if you get paid just as much uh, or more to be inattentive to risk and to make dumb decisions, well, then you shouldn't expect people to make a bunch of good decisions. And, and nor, nowhere, I'm just going to contrast two things in particular, the residential mortgage business on the one hand and the credit card business on the other. Okay, so the credit card business, which recall is, you know, in some ways like this horrific thing, like it's an unsecured credit. And by the way, every time someone goes bad, they go bad for the full amount. No one, no one decides they're not going to pay and then doesn't use the line. So it's like this horrific dynamic, yet unemployment doubles and every single credit card master trust in the country is just fine. They, they, you know, the bondholders get paid. With one exception, that was, I think, kind of done on purpose by the issuer. So uh, contrast that to the mortgage business, which in most respects you would think is just substantially less volatile. And you had master trust structures, uh, you had trust structures blowing up all over the place. And obviously, the CDO structures built on top of them were a complete calamity. Um, and the main reasons to me in that is that in mortgage, it was impossible to get paid to make good decisions. On the one hand, you either were competing head to head with the sovereign effectively in the GSEs, who have, oh, I don't know, a superior cost of equity, superior cost of debt, way more leverage, way more scale. Like, that can't be done. So you can't get paid to make good decisions in agency eligible paper. Uh, or you're competing against people who are making obviously ridiculous decisions, but were not holding any residual risk themselves, right? So you could literally, you could be a tiny, you could be uh, in the Alt A mortgage business, which by 2006 was like this clown show in terms of the credit decisions are getting made. And by the way, it, it, like if you look at early payment defaults, like in Alt A, it wasn't just that people had really high LTVs. The problem is like they had no notion of paying this thing back to begin with. Uh, you shouldn't make those credit decisions. But what would happen? You could turn around, you could sell those loans to Bear, Lehman at 105, 106 on the dollar. And if that's what you're competing against, if your idea is to make a more sensible loan that you're going to hold residual risk on forever, you can't compete and you shouldn't even try. And, and frankly, that's kind of what happened. Uh, and uh, you know, I think, uh, the, to me, the great promise of financial reform and of the CFPB was to try to help the market discipline itself by making it easier to get paid for smart decisions and be prevented from doing things that are obviously ridiculous and passing them off to, to others. Um, it also kind of drives, uh, you know, uh, some of this is grounded in my own point of view on the sector today and kind of the problems faced in the US financial sector. I, I am once again quite active in the sector. Uh, we effectively at Fenway Summer are like a venture investment and incubator firm. We own a, uh, we own a minority stake in a non-agency mortgage bank based on San Francisco. We own 51% of a credit card venture. Uh, I would be surprised and disappointed if we don't seed a new venture in student lending. Uh, and the, the common thread in all those things are being able to find places where you can create products and deliver them through channels that make people's lives better and allow you to get paid. Like all those things have to be true. And in our opinion, it's true in non-agency mortgage. It can be true in, in subprime credit card. And it can be true in pieces of the, the private student lending business. Um, uh, and I'm excited about all of those things. And, and we're trying to build these businesses in ways that allow us to sidestep some of the problems that a lot of the incumbent players, unfortunately, really do have today. One is just operational, right? Like, um, uh, like most people who have been inside a bank, like um, you know, I've been in my share of bank M&A and post-merger environments. And the reality is that most big banks in the country uh, are the aggregation of lots and lots and lots of little banks in the country. And when you are, when the economics are right and you kind of make the accounting go, uh, go round and you can add shareholder value in a demonstrable way, the tendency is to do the next deal. And I think we as an industry, and I own this as much as anybody, we're not quite as disciplined about tying together systems of record that would allow you to be more nimble going forward. And as a result, a lot of large institutions, and large institutions matter, Right? The big balance sheets and lots of customers are not nearly as nimble as they really could be or should be. 
because you're dealing with gigantic patchworks of legacy systems um, up and down the business system. When you start from scratch, especially when you're building businesses in 2014 and not 1954, that is a big advantage, gigantic advantage. Um, second is uh, one more about philosophy and, and governance at the top. Um, I think Wells, uh, uh, Dick, I think like Wells always sort of embraced this. And I know at Capital One we tried to embrace this. But in my opinion, it, it is a little bit lacking in the sector today. And this is the notion of paradoxical conservatism. Like you should find aggressive and aspirational things to like great ways to add value and develop new markets and new products and get to customers in new and intriguing ways. And all of that takes a certain amount of ambition and aspiration. But you cannot do great things unless you are paradoxically conservative at the same time. You have to be disciplined throughout the processes. And I think, you know, unfortunately, uh, uh, the sector in general has collapsed into sort of a, a knee-jerk uh, uh, conservatism without the paradoxical part. Uh, and as a result, you know, for, for a sector that now is basically in terms of returns is climbing back to basically making its cost of equity, I, I think the pace of kind of innovation and changing of sort of the basic kind of uh, uh, value proposition to customers it has been more limited, I suppose, than I would have preferred. Um, and then finally, the businesses that we're building and even the businesses that we invest in, we have a venture capital arm, uh, like I would like to think are embracing the principles of what can make this, this sector, consumer finance, uh, really vibrant and value-added sector. And that's, that's mostly a, kind of the common basic ordinary principles that I think most American enterprise embraces. And by contrast, that means not allowing oneself to be to sort of get into this ossified, hyper-prescriptive mode where you, know, you have senior people who should be spending more time with customers, spending way too much of their time uh, you know, kind of in compliance checklists and the like. That's a, that is a disaster. Uh, and we, as an industry, have kind of done this to ourselves. If I think back to the comment letters, right, during the rulemaking process at the CFPB, every single industry comment letter says, well, what we need is we need bright lines and clear standards, and you know, otherwise we can't do anything, because the uncertainty, oh, the uncertainty. OK, well, you know what? If that, if that is the approach, you end up with a hyper-technical, crazily layered uh, set of rules that you, know, you, you, like, realistically, a general manager of a meaningfully sized line of business inside a gigantic bank does not have the time or inclination to do. It doesn't make sense. Um, and unfortunately, we, we, we as Americans have uh, developed a fascination with rules and, and much less around sort of sensible principles. Uh, the nice thing about starting from scratch, and as we are in many of these businesses, is you can kind of press the reset button on some of that as well.